Man, I don't gotta really do an intro for this. Just play the Pokemon theme song, do a quick Pokemon Red speedrun, and then move on to the first segment. Maybe even put on the opening to the game while we're at it. Really let the 8-bit get inside of our heads. Take us back to the radical 90s or something. Anyways, yeah. You know how I talk about Pokemon no one uses? Well, today, we're gonna be starting the opposite. But instead of a type, it's a generation. You know how it goes. Either it's really popular, or really good, typically. I'm not gonna do a segment on the Kanto starters, because I just don't wanna. Before that though, the usual plugs, Miss Maggie is crystal clear, and Windmaker HD Let's Plays. Links will be in the description below. Now let's start right off with, We're going to start this one off properly, and we're going to take a moment to talk about Snorlax. I wanted to dedicate this segment to Tauros, but it wouldn't be Mystic Talks About Tauros, it would be Mystic Talks About Gen 1 OU. And the Gen 1 O YouTubers just do that so much better than me. And I'm not going to try to hop on their flow like that and join the conversation like little Timmy trying to sit at the cool kids table at lunch. Snorlax, however, I know a lot more about, because it's not just used in Gen 1, it's also used in Gen 2 and 3 OU a lot too, and is one of the best Pokemon in those tiers, and just outright the best in both Gen 2 OU and Ubers. But not only is it good in those tiers, it's also gonna weasel its way onto a playthrough in a couple games, because Snorlax is outright given to you for free in Kanto and Kalos, and who's gonna pass up stats that look like these? Not very many people. If you're looking for a set for the modern day, I typically like Curse, Rest, Body Slam, and Crunch with Leftovers or a Chestoberry myself. There is absolutely no denying just how cracked of a Pokemon Gengar used to be back in its heyday. Yeah, it's good now, don't get me wrong, but pre-Gen 7, this Pokemon was practically everywhere. In Gens 1 and 2, it was one of the premier Hypnosis users. In Gen 3, Bro was a versatile nightmare offensively and defensively. And in Gens 4 and 5, it used its type combo, stats, and abilities to spec into pure offense and was faster than a lot of valuable important Pokemon. Sure. Nowadays, from Gen 7 to 9, it's been a UU Pokemon, but it's an all-star in those formats thanks to its speed, versatility, and coverage move pull. Despite being introduced in the first generation, it's managed to keep up with power creep its entire life. And I gotta respect that. Because of how utterly insane it is as a Pokemon, everyone's likely used it at least once in a competitive match to fill a team slot. In game, it's a bit harder to get your hands on it because you gotta trade. But hey, it's worth that time usually. Even if it is for all the different forms that it can evolve into, Eevee by all accounts is one of the most used Pokemon even if it's solely for the potential it has. The things that it can evolve into are typically good at filling a team with a specific niche they add to it. The ones I'll discuss right now are mostly gonna be to keep in theme with Kanto, Vaporeon, and Jolteon. Because who or what is Flareon? Vaporeon, being a bulky water, basically speaks for itself. You're gonna use it either in-game or not, because it's a Pokemon and gets Surf. And sometimes that's all you need. And in terms of its comp viability, it's never really been bad per se, outside of Gen 9 where it lost Toxic. Jolteon does exactly what you expect it to do, being the fast electric type for if you don't want to or feel like using Electabuzz in Raichu. And it has a rather solid kit for itself, with stuff like Volt Switch, Calm Mind Now, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, and of course Thunderbolt and Terra Blast to work with. Eevee is also really cute, it also has its own game that more people probably play than the Pikachu version. Which is cool too. Now, I probably shouldn't mention Pikachu and Eevee too loudly. If my writer hears me, he's gonna break into my house 
and tell me to rank them the way I did the other starters. Before I have to do a ranking let's go starters from weakest to strongest, where it's just my actual face staring at the mascots for one minute before I make a conclusion and pause the video abruptly. For those interested in that idea, if the video gets a thousand likes, I'll do it. Oh. I did say that. Yeah, uh, no. I changed my mind. We're not doing that. So, Mankey being obtainable really early in a fire red one, if you happen to, let's say, pick Charmander, is really useful if you don't want to grind to finally be able to beat that stupid Onyx. So, for that alone, everyone who used Charmander in that game probably picked up Mankey, even if it wasn't a permanent team member. And yeah, I know, Charmander gets Metal Claw, but Onyx still has Rock Tomb and I'm gonna assume that's gonna do a lot of damage to Charmander. Low Kick was just that nice to have. However, keeping it around yielded high reward because Primeape is just awesome. With a solid set of attack and speed, being notably the fastest fighting type in Kanto, which is pretty nice. Sure, in the current meta, it isn't used that much anymore, but that's fine because they gave it a full-ass evolution that will be used in any format it's both legal in and not surrounded by top-tier legendaries. So, speaking of top-tier legendaries, it's safe to say that everyone has tried their hand in an Ubers match with Mewtwo. Obviously, some people have taken it through their post-game runs in the Kanto and Johto games. And then X and Y, because you can just kind of catch Mewtwo in a cave in the post game, where it has not one, but two Megas to work with. It's kind of hard to not use Mewtwo, especially since even nowadays, it's a pretty good Pokemon in the context of the legendaries. Its speed and special attack are nothing to scoff at, but what keeps it relevant more than anything is its ridiculous coverage move pull. Stuff like Ice Beam, Fire Blast, Thunderbolt, Aura Sphere, various support moves, Hurricane if you're on Rain, and then Nasty Plot to really kick things into overdrive in terms of power? Yeah, this Pokemon can and will always cook in one way or another. You just gotta let him in the kitchen with this comically oversized spoon. Speaking of top tier legendaries, while this Pokemon is no uber, and actually weirdly fell off from OU recently, Zapdos isn't a Pokemon to be particularly laughed at. It's the best of the three legendary birds, and arguably by a mile, thanks to its overall better defensive typing and superior speed tier. And then access to static, because Game Freak wanted to make it and Moltres very annoying to U-turn against, while making sure that Articuno was still about as useless as one could get. Volt Switch, Heat Wave, Roost, and Discharge make it a valuable asset to a balanced oriented core, while stuff like Thunder and Hurricane coming off of a base 125 special attack in the rain makes it a valuable asset to the local fisherman who plans to fight you with the Pelican, and well, a fish. In just about every game it's in, it's gonna be good. There's no reason not to use it when you find it in the power plant in Kanto, or when it randomly shows up in Kalos depending on your starter for some reason. Yeah, I never understood that. But hey, it's amazing, and that's what matters. Now, speaking of Pokemon that are just amazing, it's no secret that Gyarados is just kind of a demon no matter what game you use it in. There is very seldom a time where you can look at Gyarados in a game and say, this doesn't have the potential to threaten me. And there is seldom a time when it's on your team where it contributes absolutely nothing past level 20. When you evolve it at level 20 in the first games, it carries by sheer stats. A shiny one is just handed to you in Johto after you've already got Surf, just so you can snap it on there and sweep Team Rocket. And starting in Sinnoh, it gets Dragon Dance by level up. And Magikarp is obtainable the moment you get the old rod. They 
really, really want you to use Gyarados. And we all fell for the scheme because those stats and that Dragon Dance does not lie. And even if you don't take it to PVP or don't like spamming setup moves, you know what I did as a kid? I just put Aqua Tail, Fire Blast, Thunder, and Blizzard on it, and it did a fine job in a Johto playthrough. And pretty much got me through the early Battle Castle and the Battle Frontier before actually good sets got thrown my way. To tell me that you've never used Growlithe is like proclaiming that you have never breathed air. Everyone in their life at one point has used Growlithe and Arcanine. It's like a rite of passage to see this incredibly good boy in the wild and then decide to use it because it's simply the right thing to do. I quite literally cannot comprehend any other line of play unless you happen to already be on a fire type. But in the first few games, we're picking up a fire type not called Charmander in Cyndaquil wasn't something we had at our leisure then you absolutely picked it up to cover for that slot. There is no telling me that you haven't taken your dog out on a walk and let it beat up the local wildlife. Not to mention, look how cute it is. It's a puppy, and then it evolves into Arcanine. It just becomes even more dog. And then to further compliment how good of a dog Arcanine is, it has Intimidate, which is one of the best abilities. Plus, it's got solid stats and a good move pull to boot with extreme speed even. Before Incineroar came around, it was even the best intimidating fire type in VGC. That's how good of a boy it is. And then we had the deal with Tony the Tiger here who got the same exact ability and pushed him out of the metagame. I like Incineroar a hell of a lot more than I used to, but I gotta say, I like Arcanine more. So, similar to how I've talked about how the claim that one has never used Arcanine is the equivalent of saying you don't have to breathe, saying you've never dabbed in the art of the early game fully evolved bug type is like saying that you've never had to drink water or eat food. It's human nature to see Caterpie say, level 10 Butterfree, and then slide that on the team while its stats carry through the early game. Stuff like Sleep Powder, Poison Powder, and Stun Spore are excellent moves for letting you catch Pokemon and the Chi certain boss fights. And then you get the spam Confusion, Gust, Silverwind, and if you were just that loyal to your butterfly, Bug Buzz. And then in order to make it actually useful in PvP, they give it Quiver Dance in Gen 5, which meant that you could play a Focus Sash Butterfree who used Sleep Powder on slower leads to prevent hazards, and then set up in their face with Quiver Dance so you can get some damage done before going down. Now, is this good? Not with those stats. But hey, we were all curious at one point to see if we could make this cute little creature work. It is indisputable that for one reason or another, you've caught Ditto. You've either caught Ditto because you needed it to breed a Pokemon because the natures just weren't adding up and you needed the right one after enough tries, or you've caught Ditto because Imposter is really good and you've wanted to use it and Choice Scarf to prevent those annoying Dragon Dancers from cleaning your clock. Like Dragonite, for instance. Who I know I could have slotted on here, but like, level 55 is a big number. Ditto has always been there as needed, and I respect that. It's the hero who saves the day when the formats get a little too powerful and someone needs to put the threats down. If you need an anti-sweeper, Ditto is always there to reverse the situation and win you the game. Hopefully. And that's it. And there are plenty of other Pokemon that people use, like Alakazam, Machamp, Cloyster, and other really cool stuff. So, tell you what, tell me in the comments what your favorite Gen 1 Pokemon to use is, and why is it not Clefable and Chansey? In the meantime, I'm gonna go through Fire Red again with this team. I just wanna do a quick playthrough to get the edge off.